Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. This is for you, uh, not technical divers, this is for you technically minded people, you handyman, you, you guys that can't keep your fingers on nuts and bolts and adjustments. <laughs> this is how to check the IP. Now Kevin said they won't know what IP is. I said my divers are smart. They know that IP means intermediate pressure. So particularly if they're handy and they want to work on their own regular, they know that. So this is a adjusting intermediate pressure. And just to be sure, because I know that I have a lot of relatively new divers, the intermediate pressure is the pressure in between the first and second stage. Intermediate, you see? You know, like your first stage goes on to the tank, and the tank is 3,000 PSI. That's called high pressure, HP, high pressure, 3,000 PSI. The regulator itself, it needs to have 150 PSI. Okay, that's called low pressure. So the first stage reduces that 3,000 to 150. Well, that 150 is through this hose. You see, it comes from the first stage to the second stage, and this is called the intermediate pressure. That 150 is intermediate. High pressure, intermediate, commonly called low pressure as well. So now you need to be able to check that because the first stage must supply high pressure at intermediate pressure. 150 psi. It must have a constant supply. If the intermediate pressure drops substantially, well, technically you won't be able to breathe. You won't get enough air to breathe. If the intermediate pressure climbs substantially, and that's what happens when a first stage malfunctions. Most regulators, in fact, best of my knowledge, I have to think about that, but I think that all regulators now are designed in such a way that if the first stage has a problem, if there's a fault or a breakdown in the first stage, it does not cut the air off. Instead, the intermediate pressure climbs. First stage is faulty. Intermediate pressure doesn't stay at 150. It climbs. And that's good. Because if it climbs, when you, uh, uh, you, what happens is you get too much air. You call it a free flow. I call it too much air. A free flow is bad, right? Too much air is good. A lot better than not enough. Anyway, the point is that it free flows. So, uh, but if the intermediate pressure is accurately set for 150 or for whatever the intermediate pressure is for that regulator, then it's perfect. So you need to have some way of checking the intermediate pressure before you do anything else with your regulator. And also by checking the intermediate pressure, you can tell a lot of things. You can tell a lot of things. So how do they do that? How do they check the intermediate pressure? Well, if you're in a service center, if you're in a scuba service center, you probably have a device like this. This is a gauge, so you can check the pressure, and at the same time, it's an adjustment for that intermediate pressure. So this particular device can do both. Also, this particular device is about $125, so sometimes more, uh, which is a lot of money if you're only going to do it once or twice a year just for fun. So I have a solution to that. Here's what you do. You go to your local pool supply company or to your local or harbor freight. What you want to do is you want to get a cheap gauge. Cheap. <laughs> Six bucks, 10 bucks, $12. If you pay more than 12 bucks, sorry to say this, uh, retailers order it online. About 10 bucks is right to get a cheap gauge. They're used on pools, they're used on pumps, water pumps and so on, different things. Now you want to try to get one if you can, that goes up to 200 PSI, 200, zero to 200. All right, they're hard to find. They're there, you have to look for them. Zero to 300 is much more common, and that's fine. Get a gauge, a cheap gauge, read zero to 300. Now, 90% of the gauges out there will have a thread on them for threading into whatever it is you're doing. And most of those threads are one quarter NPT, one quarter inch, that's the size of the thread, national pipe thread, that's the type of thread. So most of them are like that, and then these gauges thread into pool pumps, or, or if you have a pump system, you live in the country and you get your water from a well, you have a pump. They're used on lots of different places. They're cheap, and they all have one quarter NPT. So now what do you do? Well, next, you need to get one of these fittings. One of these fittings. You recognize that end. That end Right. I know you recognize it. I see some of you guys nodding. That sure looks like the end that goes into a BC hose. Sure does. Fits in a BC hose. That end is a standard buoyancy compensator device fitting. Okay? That's easy. The other end is one quarter NPT. Now this is not a standard adapter. You'll have to get this from your 
local dive store. May be available online, uh, but you can go to your local dive store. It might cost you ten bucks, okay? And they will get it probably from Trident. I'm going to get Kevin to post the Trident diving supply. You can go to the catalog yourself, but I'll post the actual number of this device. This is really important. So now all you need to do is join the gauge that you bought to this, and that's what I've done. You see it there? You can see that the gauge fits into a a fitting that you pick up your Harbor Freight or or, or uh, Home Depot or whatever and then this buoyancy compensator fits into that so here's what you're going to end up with see it take a minute there Kevin look at it pressure gauge fits into a female female adapter and then the BCD fitting goes in the other end you need to put a bit of Teflon tape on there. It's only 150 PSI, not too much. Or you can use pipe tight, whatever type of compound you have. Screw it together carefully so you have a device that looks just like this. Now you have, for $20, you have an intermediate pressure checker instead of paying 150 bucks. So what do you do with it? Watch. BCD hose on your regulator. Fit this into it. Push. Is that upside down, Kevin? No? Oh, there you go. There's your intermediate pressure. Right on. What is it? 150? 152 PSI. This is supposed to be 150 plus or minus 15 PSI. That's pretty good. 152. This rake's perfect. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to let some air. I'm going to breathe on the regulator while you watch the gauge. You got it? Yeah. You see it move? exactly what it's supposed to do so now you have an inexpensive device for checking your intermediate pressure it's just that easy now most regulators are around 150 psi typically between 135 and 155 typically some are different what you ought to do really is go to the specs for your regulator you can often get them online maybe your local dive store if you know the service man he'll tell you what your regulator is supposed to be set for and if when you check it, if the intermediate pressure is within 5 or 10 PSI, that's perfect. Okay. Sometimes it's very difficult to get it dead on. That's why the factory puts in there 135 to 155. Sometimes they say 140 plus or minus 15%. Uh, that's quite a bit. 15% of 140 is about 20 PSI. So there's a, there's a big range in there. It doesn't have to be exact. Not important. Having it dead on will not make the reg perform any better. But now you have a good idea of your regus performing. Now you can tell other things as well. If you put this intermediate pressure gauge in and you turn it on, the air turns on, and you watch the gauge and you find the gauge is slowly dropping, the pressure is slowly dropping, like that, there's a problem with the rake. Or if the gauge goes way up, be careful, you can hurt the gauge. It goes past 150, 160, 170. First of all, let's turn the air off quick, you know, and break the gauge. Again, you have so you can tell more than just what the intermediate pressure is. You can actually spot some problems with the regulator. Anyway, there you go, guys. Now, my, uh, one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to tell you how to adjust the intermediate pressure. Now that you have a gauge for measuring it, how do you adjust it? How do you change that intermediate pressure if you needed to or wanted to? I don't know. Hopefully, that was helpful to some of you. Talk to you again soon. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips.